Nikola Gineski, welcome to our talk. Thank you so much for attending. You are part of God's worldwide mission in humanitarian work and also in evangelism. You are part of the NGO Touch of Love, which do humanitarian work in partnership with FEG Auslands and Katastrophenhilfe. And also you're part of the Free Congregational Church in North Macedonia, in Skopje. Thank you so much for attending. You as a young father, as a young man, what is your perspective on your country? Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak to you this, uh, on, the, on this meeting. And I'm really glad that I can share about uh, Macedonia and about uh, what God is doing here and what are some of the fa uh, challenges we're facing here in Macedonia when it comes to ministry. Uh, Macedonia is a very beautiful country. Uh, it's a country that became independent from Yugoslavia in 1991. Uh, and since then, it has been trying uh, very hard, I would say, to become part of EU. Uh, and in that process, we have been facing and we're still facing a lot of obstacles from our neighboring countries related to history, heritage, culture, and so on. So for more than 30 years, Macedonia has been uh, yeah, just uh, waiting and knocking at the door, and hopefully that some, that someday it will get in, uh, in the door of EU. Anyway, even though for some people, uh, they would say that uh, the greatest issue in Macedonia at the moment is that uh, we as a country are not part of the EU family. I would say the the real situation, the real opinion about the average people in Macedonia is that uh, the greatest challenge in Macedonia at the moment is the economic situation we live in. And that's the first thing. And also the second thing is the corruption that can be seen among the politicians and among many layers within the society. Mm -hmm. What are your hopes and dreams for your country? Why are you still there? Uh, yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, my hope and my uh, dream is that, yes, there will come a change. And I think that's a real thing. Uh, I know that human-made systems, where we live in a human-made system, made system, they are not perfect. They will never be perfect. They will never uh, satisfy the desires of the human heart. But still, we do hope that those systems will eventually change. But at the end of the day, uh, what we work on, what, why we serve is because we want to see people turn to the Lord. Because we know that uh, I'm not talking about that the whole, all of Macedonia will be saved and so on. But I'm talking about individuals who will get to know Christ uh, and then families who will get to know Christ. And little by little, step by step, they will bring about change. The, the organization Touch of Love, uh, it partners with the free evangelical churches in Germany. And uh, I cannot say uh, much about the beginning of that partnership because when that started, I wasn't even part of the church. So I think it's 20 plus years ago, something like that. There were people, there were people before me who started that partnership. Uh, and basically what we want to do is with the help and partnership, partnership of the German churches, we want to show the love of Christ in a practical way here in Macedonia. In Macedonia, just like in every other country almost in the world, we have a lot of ethnicities, you know, uh, and a lot of minority ethnicities like Roma people. For example, Roma people are a very important uh, minority here in Macedonia, and they live like in a very, very, very poor conditions. That's one people group that we reach. We also, since recently, started to uh, help in a local prison here in Macedonia, like the local prison here in Macedonia in the capital, in Skopje, uh, the conditions there are subhumane. You know, like even we had uh, some international organizations who said that the government needs to work, needs to work on uh, improving the conditions in the prison. Unfortunately, the government doesn't do much, but thank God that touch of love with the partnership of the German churches does something there you know so uh in the last couple of uh truck with humanitarian aid we received we were able to give them uh food clothing for example like in the in the females prison here in skopje uh the the prisoners they didn't have chairs to sit where while they were eating you know that's really like uh that's that's crazy you know and with the last truck we received a lot of chairs and we gave them away so they can at least sit while they're having a meal and um, so is the humanitarian help directly connected to your church you're working with the free congregational church uh, yes so uh, in macedonia we have the touch of love the organization touch of love 
is made of uh, people who are part of the evangelical congregational church. So uh, we volunteer at that organization, and basically, when it comes to uh, when, it, when the help comes to Macedonia, we give it away to the churches. So we are basically very rarely giving away uh, the community as a, as an organization giving away the goods directly to people. We always want to have partners, and our partners are the evangelical congregational churches, which one of those I'm part of, you know. But since recently, we have expanded that network of partners, and we have started working with other denominations, which is a huge blessing for them. So basically, when the food comes, when the food comes to Macedonia, the goods come to Macedonia, uh, we we store them in a warehouse, and from that, from there, we give them away to the partners, which are churches or organizations and after that those churches organizations they give it away to the people they are working with because we don't want to give the we don't want to be the the people who are giving away the food we want uh, or the goods we want the churches to do that so they can after that invite the people and say hey come this be part of this church or like encourage them to yeah to take part uh, to take part of the life of the local church mm -hmm. can you give us an idea how exactly does your church look like so your unity of four big churches and many mission station how does your church look like yeah so the evangelical congregational church in macedonia uh, in the modern history has been around since the late 80s now and it started as one as a one church but uh, since then up until now it has it has grown to like three more independent churches and seven more uh, mission stations so uh, what we usually do is that uh, when there is like a missionary effort and because of that missionary effort there starts uh, uh, there is like a, a beginning of a missionary station that's how we call them uh, our hope and our purpose is that someday that missionary station that mission station that will become an independent church so at the moment we have the four independent churches and we're uh, of course even though we start uh, new mission stations uh, we still want to focus on the local churches because they need to be strong so they can support the mission stations mm -hmm. can you tell us what are the characteristics of christianity in north macedonia uh, yes, Christianity in North Macedonia, uh, as if we talk about as a general uh, Christianity, uh, uh, around 70% of the people in, in North Macedonia, they declare themselves to be Eastern Orthodox Christians. So that means that the majority of the people in Macedonia declare themselves, uh, themselves, to, themselves to be uh, Christians. Uh, generally speaking, unfortunately, the majority of uh, the Eastern Orthodox Christians they're more interested in uh, knowing and keeping the tradition and not knowing and keeping the word of God. So that's one sad reality that we are faced with here. Uh, but from time to time, there are some priests within the Orthodox Eastern Orthodox Church that uh, start to teach the word of God. And uh, even we as Protestants, we, we cheer for that and we see that as a good hope for the future of the Eastern Orthodox Church. When it comes to the Protestant body in Macedonia, the evangelical Protestant body in Macedonia is, is very small. According to the last census we had uh, in Macedonia, which was, I think, one year ago, the evangelical Protestant Christians in Macedonia are around four to 5,000 at all. You know, so uh, it's, a very small, it's a very small body. It's a very small percentage. And I would say that uh, around the average church evangelical protestant church in macedonia will be made of around 30 people you know so it's not uh, not the churches are not big and the protestant body is not uh, is not big the protestant uh, believers in macedonia have been around for the for the last two or three centuries uh, but unfortunately among the eastern orthodox christians there is still the opinion that uh, protestantism is a sect and you are not basically allowed to join it and I believe that's one of the reasons why uh, the Protestant body in Macedonia is so small, because mm -hmm. if it's seen as a sect, and if it's seen that you are not supposed to join it, because you will be seen as a traitor, that's why many people, I, I believe there are people who are interested in becoming Protestant, evangelical Protestant Christians, but they do not do it because of the pressure of the society that they will, uh, they will have to endure after that. And I think that the partnership we have with the free evangelical churches of uh, receiving goods, receiving help, and then giving those away to people, I think that's a one, uh, that's a good step.
forward in uh, breaking that stereotype among the people and so they can see that we're here to serve them. Mm-hmm. We're not here to, just to convert them or to anything, but we're here to serve them just like Christ came uh, not to be served, but to serve. What are the next steps in your NGO on the one hand and also in your church on the other hand? And what do you think which help is really needed? Also from Germany, from FEG, Auslands and Katastrophenhilfe, but which help is really needed? When it comes to the help from the German churches, uh, I must say that we're very, very thankful for the resources we have been receiving in the past 20 plus years. And for me personally, it will be hard to imagine our churches and especially the NGO, you know, like functioning uh, without that help. I mean, of course, we would function, but it will be so much more difficult, you know, and that's why we are very helpful for uh, every, for all the help we have received both financially, both in uh, goods, humanitarian aid, and also when it comes to uh, shared experiences and, 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 and wisdom on how to, how to lead the churches, how to lead the humanitarian aid, the humanitarian organization. And uh, we certainly do hope that this kind of partnership will continue, you know, uh, and also our, our need, yes, it is material, but it is not also material. It is a need of, uh, getting more experience from churches from Germany who are uh, free evangelical churches from Germany who are more experienced in leading churches, in leading unions, in leading uh, humanitarian organizations. And uh, yes, we want to receive even more in future, more wisdom, more knowledge, uh, more uh, know-how, you know, and that's why we're open to new types of uh, partnerships with the free evangelical churches, anything that will help us to become stronger as churches and that will help us to reach new people with the love of Christ. What do you think are your benefits and your resources, you as a Christian uh, in North Macedonia, what are your resources for this project? I'm not speaking personally for myself, but I would say about the churches that uh, the people that we have in churches, one of the greatest resources we have at the moment is dedication. Mm -hmm. It's dedication to the work of God and it's love for, for God. You know, even though we as uh, churches in Macedonia, we, we are not capable of providing material goods by ourselves, you know, without the help of the German churches, we're not capable of, of providing goods to the to the to those who are in need, yet we have people who want to serve Christ, who have people who love Christ, and that's a great resource. And I believe when we combine that resource with the resources we receive from Germany, from the free evangelical churches, I think that's a good combination of how to serve people in Macedonia and how to how to bless people in Macedonia. Mm-hmm. What are you personally, you Nicola, are looking forward in the next next periods of time? So I hope for stronger churches first of all, because uh, quite often we know uh, to speak of we, we, we like to speak about oh let's have more people, but the question is are we ready for those people? You know because those people need. Uh, those people have needs. Those people need to be ministered to. And first of all, I pray and and we serve and we work toward having a stronger, independent local churches. And then we can have we can be in a way ready to receive people coming coming there. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nicola, for attending our talk. Thank you so much for your work, for your work of Touch of Love in your church. Thank you for serving. Thank you for building God's kingdom. Uh, And God bless you. See you. Thank you very much. See you.